There is a time and a season for everything under the heavens. A time and a season for everything under the heavens. I want to give a great shout out to the YouTube family as we thank God for this blessed and wonderful day. Blessed and wonderful day. I want to just talk about uh, a little bit on the book of Ecclesiastics. I had a good question about this and I just actually want to just kind of sum up this, this whole book. But if you got time, I challenge you to read Ecclesiastics. I really do. Because it's a beautiful book. All of the books are beautiful to me because the Bible is just beautiful. But I challenge you to read it and get a clear understanding on Ecclesiastes. So I had a good question about just summing up the whole book in my own little way. So first of all, we think about Solomon. We know about prosperity. We know about prosperity. The real prosperity, let me say that right. And then we know about wisdom. So when you look at this book of Ecclesiastes and you think about Solomon, I believe Solomon was the author of this book. Or some might have a little confusion behind that, but that all that don't matter. So why was this book even written? Well, Ecclesiastes shows us that no one, listen to what I'm saying, no one can have a happy life without God. Without God, we can't make it. No one can have a happy life without God, even though people are trying. They got they, you know, they caught up in their material things. But it's teaching us that no one can have a happy life without God. Now, I challenge anyone who think that God ain't important to read Ecclesiastics. I challenge them. Now, what do we learn about God in this book? God is more important than money, pleasure, work, or anything else in life. Let me say it again. God is more important than money, pleasure, work, or anything else in life. Now, we see people got all the money. Seems like they ain't never happy. They never satisfied. You know somebody like that. I know plenty like that. Now, what are some of the important passages in this book? And I'm just kind of breaking this down. When you look at Ecclesiastics 2, verses 1 through 11, you're going you're gonna to read and understand that pleasure can't make people happy. Pleasure can't make people happy. And we can just look at nowadays how many people are trying to please somebody else. <laughs> and it seems like you can never please them and you're not going to please them. Why? Because you should be pleasing God. You can try to please man and woman all day long and they still going to complain about something. They're going to still complain about something. If you will spend more time trying to please God and not man and woman, then you will see how prosperous you can really be. And you're going to also see that success can't make people happy. And you, when you read chapter 2, 17 through 26, success cannot make people happy. And then when you move on down to Ecclesiastes 5, 8, 6, through, through, 6 and 2, you understand that riches can't make people happy. Riches can't make people happy. Now, we already learned in chapter 3 that there's a time and a season. It's a time to love. It's a time to hate. There's a time and a season for everything under the heavens. We need to really understand this book because it, it, it applies with our life. A time to love, a time to hate, a time to make war, then a time to make peace, which I was saying in that other video. Matter of fact, Let's just go to chapter 3 for a moment and look at some of these things. Now, a time to be born and a time to die. I tell people all the time from when we was born, we've been born and waiting to die. But in between time, you need to be living for God, doing all you can for God. No, I'm not sitting there saying you're going to be a perfect man, a perfect woman, live a perfect life. No, but you can perfect what you do, and you can live for God, and you can repent, and you can be concerned about your salvation. Now, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what you plant. Isn't that beautiful? What are we reaping nowadays? I mean, what are we sowing nowadays? You will reap what you are sowing, but... What are you reaping? What, what do you have your time tied up in right now? Is it, is it material things? Is it money? Is it your caught up in what your friend's doing? Mm, mm, mm. A time to kill 
And then there's a time to heal. People look at all the killing on the land. Look at all the killing on the land. A time to turn out and a time to build. Mm. A time to weep and a time to laugh. Somebody at they weeping right now and they can't laugh because things done got them so down in life that they can't seem to get back up. They can't find joy. Mm, God Almighty. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. You remember when Apostle Paul said, I done, after I done done all that I can do, Paul was ready to go. Because when you have done all you can do, what else can you do? Mm, good God Almighty. A time for war and a time for peace, like I was just saying. A time to be silent and a time to speak. But most people can't learn to listen. That's another key in life. If you would learn to listen, shut up sometime and just listen. All JT do a lot of listening. Time to remain silent. Some people can't hear nothing because they so busy talking you can't get a word in. God Almighty. Now let's move on to chapter 4. Just for a little moment. And, and he says, and again I looked and saw all the oppression that was taking place under the sun. All the heartaches, all the pain, all the suffering. There is nothing new under the sun. Remember Solomon also said that. He said, I saw the tears of the oppressed, and they have no comfort. Power was on the side of the oppressors, and they have no comforter. And I, I declared that the dead who had already died are happier than the living. Now that's deep. The dead that has already died is happier than the living. How many people we know living right now living in misery? Some always say, you're better off dead than you are alive. Good God Almighty. Mm. But better than both, he is who has not yet been, who has not seen evil that is done under the sun. And he say, I saw the door, verse 4 says, I saw that all, all labor and all achievement spring from man's envy of his neighbor. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Why we got so many people envying each other? Jealous of each other. I want his position. I'm going to hate on him because I'm not where he is. Or I'm not where she is. I want her life. I want to be like her. So what do we do after that? We start hating on each other. God Almighty. Verse 5 say, The fool folds his hands and ruins himself. Woo! Better one handful than tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. I like that. And I saw something meaningless under the sun. Meaningless, not meaning, meaningless. What you saying, Solomon? There was a man alone, all alone. He had neither son nor brother. There was no end to his toil. Yet his eyes were not content with his wealth. Let me say that again. Yet his eyes was not content with his wealth. What do we learn here that riches can't make people happy? It might seem like it do, but... They are living a terrible life. They have no peace. They keep wanting more and more things. And then uh, verse 10, verse, oh, verse 8, excuse me. Still a part of that. For whom I'm taught, he asks, and why am I depriving myself? This too is meaningless, a miserable business. Now it says, there are two, I mean, excuse me, two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. Which is we don't we don't understand this. Two are better than one. Let's look at a marriage right quick. A lot of people are married. Two are better than one. Y'all always heard two incomes is better than one income. But let's look at half of the houses now. You can tie this scripture in with everything. You got the woman by herself. In most house, you got most houses, you got the woman by herself. Some marry, some ain't. But look what it says. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. I like to tie that in with marriage. And then 10 says, uh-oh, if one falls down, his friend can help him up. Mm. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. And then 11 says, also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. 
12 says, oh, excuse me. 11 says, also if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Hmm. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A call of three stands is not quickly broken. God bless everybody. Ecclesiastes is deep. It even goes into details about when you got two. How can one keep warm alone? Now you can take that how you want to take that. And that hits me hard because I am a single man. I have no children. See, well, I tell y'all, this book, it cuts you up. That's why you don't take your children out with abortion. Because you will understand later on in life, when you start becoming being by yourself, you're going to wish you had your children. That you either gave away for adoption or set up for abortion to be killed, to be murdered. That's how I look at that. And your life sometimes become miserable. That's why God say don't destroy the seed. Because as you get older, your children are supposed to take care of you. Train up a child in the way they should go. And when they get old, they shall not depart from it. Ecclesiastics is a great book. Proverbs also. I love Proverbs and Ecclesiastics. They just, man, when you think about wisdom. And we know Solomon was very wise. Solomon had, even though Solomon let them women get the best of him at the end, but... We can listen. That's why I like to listen at what Solomon has wrote because Solomon has been through some things. He has been through some women. <laughs> Look at all the wives he had. He was blessed beyond measure. Solomon, God asked Solomon anything he wanted. Solomon said, just give me wisdom. How many of us can really say that instead of just give me, uh, give me $40 million. Give me all the money in the world. No. See, once again, look at what, what it teaches you. Material things are meaningless. He talks about what he sees. And I saw something else under the sun. How many more things do we see under the sun right now? But it teaches us there's a time. I don't know who you are and what your season is right now. Somebody's season is up on something right now. Somebody just beginning in their season right now. And a lot of times we stay in our seasons too long. Being caught up in, well, this, I'm caught up in that. It ain't my time to go. I'm going to tell you something. When God say move, don't hesitate. Move. You got to quit worrying about what folks think and what folks say because you are not out to please, folks. The scripture just taught us that without God, it's, in, it's impossible to make it in this life. And I believe that from the bottom of my heart because if I didn't have God, I wouldn't be where I am right now. I wouldn't be where I am right now. So Ecclesiastes, I challenge you to read. It's not a real, real long book, people. Read it. God bless you.